Jennings here from Lung and Sleep. In this video, I've got a great case to show you of a 74 year old patient who presented with cough, which had been occurring over about two or three months. He was seen by his general practitioner who organized a chest x-ray, which showed an interesting finding. I'll get the chest x-ray and I'll show you, and following that, I'll show you the bronchoscopic findings to correlate it all together so we can see the exact cause for this patient's presentation and what we did to, to treat it. Okay. Here's the chest x-ray. You can see he's got ischemic heart disease and had coronary bypass surgery in the past, and you can see the sternal wires. However, the lungs look clear, the diaphragms are clear, there's no pleural fluid, no consolidation. So the cause not, is not really apparent from the frontal chest x-ray. Let's have a look at the lateral now. On the lateral chest x-ray, we can see an interesting finding. Just sitting in here, we can see this rounded opacity. And that's actually sitting where the trachea is. Although we can't see it on the frontal film, we can't tell whether it's in the trachea or not. We certainly need a CT scan to further delineate what's going on. So I'll show you the CT now. Here's the CT scan looking at the lung windows of the axial views. We'll just scan down through. Here we can see we're coming through the apices of the lungs. And in the middle is the central trachea. And here it looks completely normal and patent, but as we scroll down, we can start to see a defect right in the center towards the right hand side of the trachea. Looks to me as if it's coming off the right hand side of the trachea wall. And it's quite rounded. It's not completely obstructing the trachea, but quite close. You can see there's only a small area of lumen there, which is interesting that he did not present with shortness of breath. He presented with cough. And so it shows you that you don't need much of your tracheal lumen to still be able to breathe normally. However, if the tracheal lumen blocks off completely, then that'll be fatal. So we certainly need to determine what this is and treat it and hopefully debulk it. Let's just have a look in some other sections at this lesion first. Here is the coronal view of the CT scan. If we scroll through to once again find the trachea, here's the trachea now. And you can see that this lesion here, once again, mid trachea, looks like it's attached to the right side of the tracheal wall and quite rounded. But the rest of the airways are clear. Here's the main carina going to the left main bronchus and right main bronchus. So I think what we need to do here is a bronchoscopy. And I prefer to do this with rigid bronchoscopy so that I can secure the airway. I'd like to biopsy the lesion because I want to find out exactly what it is because that will help guide treatment most importantly. But then if I'm able to at the same time, I'd also like to debulk the lesion to remove a, a part of it so that it does not cause obstruction to the trachea. And then once we find out what it is, then we can determine whether any def further definitive treatment is, is needed. The main differentials I would think of here would be a carcinoid tumor. Um, possibly a, a lipoma, or maybe even a tracheal myxoma. Um, but we'll need to biopsy it to determine because the other possibility, which would be a bad result, would be a squamous cell carcinoma, which can sometimes occur in the central airways. However, it looks a little bit too rounded and too discreet for that. So let's hope it's one of those other lesions that's easier to treat and less aggressive. All right. Let's go and have a look down with the rigid bronchoscope now. Here is the rigid bronchoscope being intubated through the patient's mouth. I'm just pushing the tongue forwards there and finding the epiglottis. And once I can see the epiglottis there, I can lift that forwards and that will bring into view the vocal cords. There's a little bit of secretion there, so I'm just trying to lift up the epiglottis. And once I see the vocal cords, I will rotate the scope 90 degrees to the right so that the beveled edge can go through the cords. There are the cords there. I'm just going to rotate the scope, and then I can enter the trachea. And as soon as I enter the trachea, oh, I can see the lesion right there uh, at the proximal to, dis to mid trachea. Now I'll put the flexible bronchoscope through the rigid tube so I can have a good inspection of the lesion and the airways. And there you can see the lesion as appear it appeared on the CT scan. It looks like it's attached to the right, slightly posterior tracheal wall. 
It looks quite smooth, slightly vascular. It certainly doesn't look like an endobronchial uh, cancer, such as a squamous cell cancer. So once again, I think carcinoid or tracheal myxoma, maybe a lipoma is likely. I've moved past the lesion now and I'm just inspecting the right hand, right airways and the left sided airways. This is the left main bronchus. Just demonstrating that all of the airways distal to this lesion are clear. And as we come back past the lesion again, we can see that the trachea has about 20% patency. I'd like to biopsy the lesion now first, and I'm going to use the cryoprobe to do that, to make sure I get a good sample of tissue. So you can see it freezing the tissue there and removing a good sample. Now I'm going to use a diathermy snare to loop around this, and that should be able to remove the majority of this lesion just to debulk it. This will also provide the rest of the lesion for histology. So I put the snare around the lesion, tighten it, activate the diathermy, and that's just going to cut off and remove most of that lesion. So that lesion was almost completely resected from the tracheal wall with that snare. This restored patency of the trachea without complication. The histology returned to confirm that this was a tracheal myxoma. This is a good result for the patient as it's a relatively benign lesion. It did need to be resected, however, to make sure that they did not run into problems with uh, obstruction of the trachea, with mucus, or if it continued to grow. However, he did not need any further surgery, chemotherapy, or radiation, so that was a good result. Anyway, I found that a really interesting case. I hope you did too, and I hope you were able to learn something from it. Um, I'll continue to do more videos. Please let me know if you have any videos you'd, that would interest you, and remember, I'd love you to subscribe and keep an eye on the videos that we're doing. Okay, see you later.